Okay, next one. From Mexico City, Mexico, we have LA Systems. Presenting for the company at is Alex Sandoval. Give him a round of applause and bring him on out. Hi, I'm Alex, CEO of Alley Systems. We make machines speak and translate them into actions on the factory floor. Slide, please. Manufacturing systems are broken. Strained supply chains, inefficiencies, and downtime. We've thrown robots and automation at the problem, but downtime is still costing industrial players over 11% of their yearly turnover. This is a $1.5 trillion sinkhole. It's urgent that we fix the foundation of the real world economy now. The time is now because supply chains are rapidly changing. Nearshoring is becoming the strategic pivot, moving manufacturing closer to its consumer. We learned the hard way that the world cannot stop running because of its dependency on one country. A war cannot put our food supply chains at risk. It's imperative that we move manufacturing into new markets, into a more stable order of supply chains. Even as, even as Mexico and Latin America face tailwinds, the supply to meet demand is going to be an uphill battle. Take Monterrey, one of the states where we have an office. This state alone produces $28 billion in contribution to Mexico's GDP. Next year, they have announced that they will host a Tesla Gigafactory, Foxconn, and Tata. So how are they going to keep up with this demand? We're talking about an $800 billion tsunami of production demand that is coming their way. And they need to get ready now. This is why we've built Ali. Ali is a capex light infrastructure to turn legacy operations into intelligent factories. One that keeps learning with every action. We started with this device right here. We call it Ali's Gateway. It has built-in code that supports the most widely used connectivity protocols, allowing us to connect to over 90% of industrial machinery categories, sensors, and PLCs. Back to presentation. This is allowing us to connect to the factory and pull in data from processes, from machines, and from machine health. We're collecting over 200,000 data points per line, per facility. This is an untapped data gold mine until now. With built-in ERP integration and maintenance data, this device becomes Ali's central source of truth. This is how we're installing it on the client site, and it's pulling in data points from cost, maintenance, machine health, productivity, and building the brain of the factory. This is what enables our software. Move to demo. One of our cement clients loses $500,000 every hour their oven is not in production mode. We're tracking every single one of their machines. Machine learning models detect when there's irregular activity or machine failure. But here's what makes us different to any other manufacturing software out there. We're not a monitoring solution. We're an intelligent being. We tell factories what's the probable cause and what's the recommended course of action. Years and years of factory know-how now live on in a system that makes predictions and makes recommendations. In our efficiency module, we're tracking productivity, quality, costs, and availability. If you have a mixture, then a mixture that the density is not hitting in target, we'll let you know. Is there a product wastage in one of the stations? We'll tell you why, where it is, and what to do about it. The beauty of our model is every single action improves our model's algorithms, creating network effects that ultimately benefit every single customer on our platform. 
But we thought really hard, how in an industry where every single second counts, how can we make decisions even faster and simpler? So we built a chatbot. We call it the Ali AI Assistant. But this assistant is trained with all of your productivity data. So we can ask it anything about your operation. Ernie, let's ask it to please graph operational efficiency by station and date in the last month. We've asked Ali things like, please tell me the root cause of all my downtime to, take, to make comparisons. And it's built in with generative BI, so it gives you visualizations. And these are problems that would have taken two weeks to solve, weeks of data crunching, a squad of engineers, and now you can solve it in a second. There you go. So let's back to presentation. Let's imagine a world with Ali-enabled factories running AI-powered operations to make factories respond quickly to market demands, making manufacturing more efficient and more sustainable. We're very excited to say that in 12 months, we have achieved seven figures of revenue, averaging productivity increase of 15%. Over $400 million are trained and monitored through Ali. So if you believe in our, in our mission of stabilizing supply chains in, more, in a world of more efficient manufacturing, come join us and let's build smart operations together. Thank you. We'll go to Rebecca. Yeah, so, uh, so I actually spent some time in plants at one point in Amazing. time in Mexico. I helped right. launch Procter & Gamble's uh, a couple of divisions in Mexico. So we'd love to know about um, your go-to-market. So really impressive $400 million of transactions going through the system. Tell us about that. Tell us who, what you're doing, you know, those uh, proof of concepts or those contracts. Yeah, so our go-to-market starts from building uh, an industry case study from the, one of the top three manufacturers in the region. We've built a network of angel investors of key industry players in the top manufacturing cities in the north of Mexico and in key industrial cities in Latin America. So these are, are angels from Mexico? From Mexico and Latin America. Very smart. They are Good. introducing <laughs> us to the owners and the family offices of the top industrial conglomerates five to, from $5 billion production facilities onwards. And, and that's how we uh, target and build a case study. And then that we have a trickle down effect to all the other players in the segment. Is Slim an investor? <laughs> so soon, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> Jacob? Yeah, just to kind of double click on that. So what does the timeline and the progression look like from like, you get one of these angels on the cap table, hopefully they start to connect with these folks, you do a proof of concept. When does that turn into a mature customer? And then right. does that continue to scale or is that kind of steady yeah. state revenue with that plan? The, the beauty of our model is because we start from the top, it's a CEO mandate um, and we can move very quickly. We've closed deals as, as quickly as 1.5 months. Um, we are transforming the operation of the facility, and because it becomes from the CEO office, we work with all the departments like quality, maintenance, uh, to transform uh, the operation. And that, in, in total, from signing contract to having a, a live site, it takes about three to 3.5 months. What's the, just to kind of double click on that, what is kind of the NPS on the people that are maybe not a part of the top-down decision when this thing gets dropped into their plant? Like, are they happy to have this thing or is this like, hey, we got told to do this? So, so right now, a very interesting question. We've, we are realigning the incentive model on all levels so that we not only make their life easier because it's really easy and simple to use our platform, but if we have efficiency increase, those uh, gains also get translated to the operator. Yeah. Go ahead. So this is kind of observability for manufacturing, right? And so how similar are those plans? So if you, if you make one plan successful and you realize certain gains, how easy it is to go from like car manufacturing to like medical device manufacturing? Are they going to be similar or like wildly different? Right. I think our models are um, really effective at a, in a, at a segment level. So Steel manufacturing is a big segment for us, food and beverage, and we find about 80% of similarities between the types of machineries and processes that are being used. We've invested a lot in configurability. So starting with Ali, you can configure your notifications, you can configure your machines, you can create users, allowing us to have a very scalable, scalable platform from day one. 
And then um, when is the magic moment? So let's say you shook hands with the CEO, start deploying, and when is the first time you can demonstrate value for, for your solution? We, we've had a lot of uh, aha moments. I think the first one is when they start seeing patterns. Like, all of this data lives in silos. They have a silo for maintenance, a silo for efficiency, and they've never had a connected source of data that's finding patterns and correlations between the data. So when you tell them, hey, one of these processes and this component is costing you 5% of your operational efficiency, and you can get that through Ali's assistant, that's an aha moment for a supervisor and for an owner. And finally, um, oh, go ahead. Uh, so you demonstrated the chatbot, and, and I'm trying to parse in my head, is it just because AI is hot, or you, you see that chatbot to be the primary interaction with the system? The, the concern I have is like models tend to hallucinate, and so when you ask questions in, in plain English, how do you ensure that, that the reports are accurate? Because like there's a machinery on the back end that you know, inter interfaces with the data warehouse and whatnot, yeah. That, that, that like generates those reports. Really good question. We, we didn't build a chatbot because of a trend. We built it because they have task forces that need to do analysis, and they take weeks to do it. So we really thought, how, how do we make decisions really, really easy and really, really simple? We have a data pipeline that cleanses all of the data from all the reports. So we have models that do unsupervised uh, machine learning to do classification, and then we have semi-supervised and supervised models that are basically cleansing the data, goes through a pipeline, and then when it's classified, it goes into a database that this queries to give them effective and accurate information. Thank you. Guru? As the underlying machines in these manufacturing sites get smarter themselves and they're learning the users and also talking about sort of intelligent uh, manufacturing, do you find yourself at odds competing for the same dollars because they're trying to sell monitoring for their machines and yeah. so are you? Uh, interesting question as well. We found that automation does not equal digitalization. So you can have a very, very smart Siemens machines from 2023, but that machine will, and will have a screen and it's monitoring everything, but it's completely disconnected from everything else. You don't know what a failure in that machine is costing quality, what it's causing your operational efficiency because it's living by itself. So we are agnostic. We connect to all types of brands, old and new, and we're able to do um, correlations between those data sets, what, which, what, which, uh, which a manufacturer can't, can't do at this point. What is the diversity of equipment manufacturers in a typical plant? Is it all Siemens? Or very, is it, very, very large. It's like the max we're concentration. Talking, we're talking 250 brands in, a, in one facility. Okay. All right. So they, they would have to purchase 250 softwares. <laughs> from 250 brands. Right. We're out of time here. Thank you so much. Give Alex a round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.